folks. Uh, I've noticed in a lot of the uh, forums that people, especially beginners, are really looking for what do I need as far as tools. And you know, and I've seen students over the past 30 or 40 years when they want tools, they make a mistake of buying a so-called toolkit from someone and you get a lot of stuff that you really don't need. So what I've done here is I've put together a little kit uh, that, you, that you should, these are the tools that you wanna make sure that you have. It's bare minimum. I'm gonna do three different videos, uh, primary tools for the bench, then secondary tools, which are going to be heavier weight, and then th third-party tools are going to be like, you know, rolling mills and stuff like that. So we're going to get started here, and we're going to talk about a torch and all everything that goes with it. Now, I use two different torches. I use a Smith Little Torch. I also use a Mecca. I use the Mecca for bigger pieces. I use the Smith for smaller pieces. They're both oxygen and acetylene. They, you, can buy the, you can buy this at Rio Grande. It's gonna set you back probably 600 bucks, something like that, wherever you buy it. They're, they're not cheap, but they are essential. Number two, you're gonna need a light. This is a really nice light from Airby. Uh, the beauty of this light, and I've been using this light for years, you turn it on and off here, but this new feature that they have, has got a, it's an LED light and you can actually take it and, dim, and it's got a dimmer switch. It's also got a, uh, one of these ports where you can plug in a computer down here. These are gonna set you back, I don't know, 250, 300 bucks. All right, the other thing you're gonna have to have is a bench. Now, you can get a bench from anywhere from $300, $350, all the way up to two or $3,000. I still use one of these. I don't have to have one that has made out of wal walnut with 50, 50 drawers in it because my tools that I use at the bench are right in front of me. I don't have to have all these drawers because I'm always running around the entire studio. This will get you going. It's 99% uh, of them are identical to this. They're made by Grobe. And uh, if you get one of these, you, get, you make sure you go to eBay and you look at it. You want to get the one that has free shipping. And with free shipping, it'll run you about $350 to $375. Okay. Solid bench top, butcher block top. They're good bench for the money. I've told you about the light. Okay, you're gonna have to have a Fordham. This is a, uh, uh, an SR series, it's got the reverse. This will run you about 300 bucks, something like that. And then you got your handle here to hold it up. So there's your Fordham, your light, your bench. You're, running, you're looking at around 1200, something like that for all three of these. But the thing is, they'll last you forever. You're never gonna have to replace them. All right. Since we started with the torches, we're going to start with soldering. This is what you need for soldering. This is a solderite block. It's non-asbestos. And I use this. You can either solder on it or you can use it as a pad and use something else on top of it. So you got your solderite block there. I, I do a lot of soldering on charcoal. I like it because it's a heat, it reflects heat onto the piece. I use this charcoal block on top of this to keep from burning my tape, burning my uh, bench. If you go through my studio, I've got eight benches in there and they, they look like the California forest fires uh, hit every one of them. So you got that. Okay, I'm going to move these out of the way. Okay, soldering. You're going to need a tripod. Tripods come in six inch heights and eight inch heights. They come with a piece of crap uh, screen door for the screen. It's galvanized. I don't like the fumes that come off of it. So put about an extra three or four dollars and get yourself a stainless steel screen to go with it. It'll last forever. The one that comes in the packet is good for about a week. So think about that. Tripod. I'll put that aside. Soldering. I use handy flux. A lot of people use batterns, prep flux, you name it. I like handy flux. It works. You're going to need a third hand. Third hand is a good thing to have. I don't use it like uh, a lot of people I see. They, if they're soldering a ring, they'll put the ring in the third hand and solder the back of it. I don't, I don't use, the, do it, use that at all. I use this simply, and I very seldom use the clip to hold something. I use this if I'm doing something to put some weight on the top of it to make it balance on something that I'm going to solder. Solder, more soldering. Okay, you're gonna need yourself a pair of tongs copper tongs to get stuff out of the pickle. And while we're talking about pickle, 
Get yourself a crock pot. I like the, uh, this is a tiny one. I like the one up from it. It's got a, gl and it's gonna have a glass lid on it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that piece of steel strip around the lid, take it off. Take a jeweler saw, cut it, snip it with a pair of tweets, tw uh, snips, rip it off. And I like it, I like the uh, other one because it's got a gauge turn it on and off this one is just you're you're gonna forget about it plug in but I like this little one when I'm working here back at, at my bench instead of using my big one okay gonna move that out of the way solder pick solder picks run the gamut lots of different kinds this one's titanium with a wood handle this one's titanium with a plastic handle. I don't like these because this piece after in here will start spinning inside the handle. So I don't like those. This is a new one. This is called welding rod. That's all it is. It's a piece of welding rod that's been cut in half and sharpened. This by far to me is the best soldering pick you can get. You can get them at any welding supply and just, just cut it off. Nothing will stick to it. So there's your three solder picks. You're gonna need some tweezers. Two kinds of tweezers that I use that I like. These are new, these are titanium. Nothing's gonna stick to these titanium and they're, they're lightweight, they can be cleaned up and they're cheap enough where you can throw them away when they get trashed. This is the old style that I use, just a number three cheapo. And uh, these, will last, these will last a long time, but solder will stick to them. Uh, so you have to constantly clean them out with a file and get them cleaned up. But these are, these are a couple of bucks. So you got those. You're gonna need a brush. I get these little 10 cent brushes, they work. That's a flux brush. I use these, throw them away after they're destroyed. Sometimes when I destroy flux brushes, it's because I, I get in a hurry with my work and uh, if I'm ready to solder, I've already heated the metal up and I'll take a flux brush to put the flux on and the, these things just tend to disappear. Going back to soldering, this is something I made years and years and years ago. It's nothing but a little plastic cup that I drilled all these little holes in and put a sterling silver handle on it. That way, when I drop stuff in my, I can put my pieces in here, drop it in the pickle, and then reach in there and pull it out. Instead of having to take a pair of tweezers and the pickle smoke is coming into your face and you're trying to find something. This works a lot better. Okay, so that's gonna be it for the soldering part of the tools of the tools that you're going to need. I'm going to go into some hand tools now. Okay, this is all going to be on fabrication when you're working with your tools. Now, before I start, I probably have a hundred pairs of pliers all over my bench. I could probably get by with five of them. So what I'm going to do is tell you three or four of them that you need that will get you going for right now. You can always buy more tools as your experience gets, high, gets higher. But this is just a basic uh, set that, to start with. Now, first thing I'm going to tell you is buy yourself a pair of Joyce Chin scissors. These are used for everything. I can cut bezel wire with these, cloisonne wire, solder, uh, I can cut up to about 20 gauge material with these to, to make strips. Just really nice to have. You want to get the ones that are made in Japan, not China. Now, pliers. This is the old school plier right here. You notice the handles are just regular handles and you basically have to grip it here and here to work with it. The new type of plier are called ergonomic. Yeah, ergonomic. And you can either, you can use them this way, the way I've done it, or you can take your thumb and put it here and put your finger here and use these things in a lot better position to go in and get things. This handle I much prefer. It's bigger, it's fatter, and it's a lot more comfortable. These, these pliers are all German. I don't buy cheap pliers and I don't use cheap pliers because it's, it's a reflection of your work. These are going to last forever. You're not going to see air in between the jaws. They're going to be really nice tips that don't get, uh, they're all uh, box joint pliers. And these are going to last you a lot longer. So put some money into your tools. We don't talk about northern tools here. We don't talk about uh, 
so-and-so freight. So I'm just gonna, when I, I'm gonna show you these tools, the basics ones, and I'm gonna lay them right here. So I've got a pair of chain nose pliers. That's one pair you're gonna need. Another pair you're going to need are just flat nose pliers. I love these, just really nice. I'll put those right here. The other pair you're going to need are your round nose pliers. These are good for everything round. Those three pliers really work well. And then I'm gonna add a couple that I think you might wanna consider. One of them is going to be a forming plier. Now this is when you're forming a ring or a bracelet and you have one side is curved, one side's flat, so you can put the curved side where it's going to curve and you're not gonna mar it by, with a pair of uh, flat nose pliers or something else. So that would be my fourth pair. And I've also got an, another pair of these uh, really long uh, needle nose pliers, but you don't need these, so I'm not even gonna tell you about them. Okay, snips. Snips are very important. Snips are gonna run the gamut from between $5 up to 55 and 65. You start getting into the Tronics and the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Lindstrom's and those, you're gonna be paying some money. These are Italian. These are really nice. These are in between in the, in the uh, price range for about 10, 15, 20 bucks. Once you start going up to Lindstrom's, and those, you're gonna get into the $50 and $60 range. These work really well. I've been using them for years, and uh, they're, it's a flush cut. It's a really nice flush cut. Not ultra flush, but nice and flush. So, you can get by with these five pairs right here to do damn near everything you wanna do. I'm gonna move those out of the way. This is a steel ruler. It's in uh, millimeters and half in and inches. You gotta have a ruler. And I, I had a bunch of plastic ones, uh, but they get burned up. They're not gonna last a week. The steel one, easy to read, big letters. Just like that. Okay, moving on. So now, we're talking about saws. Gotta have a saw, gotta have a saw, gotta have a, gotta have a, gotta have a saw. You can, get one of the, you can get a really fancy saw if you want. I've seen them, the one that looks like a musical note. And that's okay if you want one. But I have been using this old German style saw for about 45 years now, one, well, one like it. And I'm still using it. This is a new one. When you get one of these, you can get a $10 one that looks identical to this and it's gonna say German style. Or you can pay 20 bucks, 25 bucks, and you can get one that says made in Germany. That's the one you want, made in Germany. Now, the saw, this is a four inch saw, so I can cut into a depth of metal pretty good bit. I don't go any higher than this. I don't get a five or a six, because if I'm doing something that has a six inch cut, I'm gonna use a shear, or I'm gonna use my joist chins. Uh, a four and a three are what I recommend. So there's your saw. Blades. Blades come in 20 different sizes, or 18 different sizes. There's one through eight, or one through 10, and then one dash zero, which is one aught to eight aught. I don't use any of the high numbers, one through 10. I use the lower numbers, one aught through eight aught. And I start with a three aught. I buy a three aught, four aught, five aught, six aught, seven aught, and eight aught for really intricate cutting. Everyday, everyday sawing, three aught, four aught. Last year, all day. One thing you want to make sure though is you get decent blades. Super Pike or Super Pike are excellent and the Rio Grande Laser Gold also excellent. I don't touch e any of the other ones. The Hercules, the Yellow Labels, the Antelopes, I don't use any of those. I use Super Pikes and uh, the Laser, Laser Gold. Okay. When you're finished working with your metal, or before you, after you saw it and you wanna do some finishing, we're gonna start talking about files. Now, I use different size files. I'll use a Habilis. Now, all of my files are Swiss, uh, Swiss or German. And I use mostly a number three cut. So, 
This is the number two cut for rough stuff. This is a Habilis file, and it's a half round, so I can get, if I really want to work on the inside of a ring shank, this is my go-to go -to guy right here. This is a rough cut. It'll cut really quick. So there's one file right there. I got another one just like it, only a smooth cut. This is like a number three. You can see, you can see the difference in the teeth. These files will last you forever. A flat file. You've got to have a flat file with a safe edge. Now, what's a safe edge? All right, on a file, you've got four sides. A flat file, you've got one side here, one side here, one side here, and one side here. You have one side on the side as a safe side. So if I am cutting, if I'm cutting and cleaning up the inside of a piece, and I want to get that corner, I'll take my file with the safe side and go all the way around up to the corner and file. That way I know if, that it's not going to be uh, filing this in. If I flip it around by mistake and I start filing, I'm taking this off too, which I don't want. So square files, remember what a safe, safe side is and make sure you get one with a safe side. They're not as easy to come by as, as they used to be. So that way, this is a nice flat file for long edges. And remember, a Fordham does not take the place of a file. Needle files. I love these needle files. I get the uh, eight inch ones, eight inch total length. When you're buying a file, remember, if you go to the catalog and they say, this is a six inch file, the six inches is the cut. It does not include the handle. So if they say it's a six inch file, it's gonna be six inches of cut. File doesn't count. These are eight inches long with a five inch cut and a three inch handle. So remember that, especially when you're buying a file that it says overall length when you buy it. I buy these in a number three cut. These are the files you're gonna need. I got a nice little half round here to get into small places. This one I use to go into circles that I've cut to make them totally round if I wanna do a tube rivet or something like that. This is just an everyday flat file that I use like crazy. The same as these. These, these three files right here will get you out of most problems. And these will solve most of your problems. Just like that. Okay? All right, we're going to talk, talk a little bit about cleanup now. Or, and then finishing. I use different brushes. Uh, I like a really nice soft German brass brush to clean gold or brass. Uh, remember, if you, if you take a, a brass brush and start cleaning sterling silver with it, you're going to give the sterling a yellow tint. The brass is going to go into the metal. So don't do that. If you're going to be doing cleaning with sterling, use the stainless steel. This is, this is good for a lot of things. It's a great cleanup brush. And it's wonderful if you oxidize things. If you take a piece of textured metal or any metal and oxidize it, and you want to bring out the color of the oxidation, stainless steel works really well for that. Smooth bristles so that you're not going to be scratching your material. You're just going to be cleaning it. So those are two files. After you've pickled your piece and cleaned it up and polished it and everything, you need some kind of a, a washout brush. Use ammonia, soapy water, and hot water, and use this old plastic brush right here. A toothbrush works just as well. I used to make the mistake of using my toothbrush, and then I'd brush my teeth with it, and it, it, it really tasted weird, you know? And I, I figured, what am I doing? I said, oh, I'm eating phlox, so I don't do that anymore. <laughs> okay, wrapping it up. Finishing. I did, I did outdoor craft fairs and indoor craft, indoor craft shows for many, many years. And one of the things that will kill a sale is when a person would be trying a ring on and they'd take their finger and they'd move the stone. And if it moved at all, no sale. Take it back. You can, you can tell them all day. It's in there, ma'am. The bezel is over the stone. It's not going to move. Uh-uh. They don't want it. So here's what, it, what you do. If you make a bezel, and then you have your stone that goes into it, and you put your stone in it on top of something. I'd raise it up a little bit. If you take your bezel and just roll it on top of the stone to tighten the stone in, 
it'll hold it in. It's not going anywhere, but it could be loose. So what you do is you take this little tool, which is a rocker, and you take this and you go sideways and you rock that bezel against the girdle of the stone. That's pushing the bezel to the edge of the stone. And I guarantee you, when you do this first and then you come back and do this, stone's not going anywhere. It's going to be tight. So that's just a little uh, demo there for that. And uh, so that's that. We're going to put those aside. All right, we're going to talk, do a little bit about hammers now. Hammers. I've probably got a hundred hammers and I use them all for different things. These are what will serve you well. This is a Delrin mallet. It's got a weight in it. It's going to cost you 50 bucks wherever you get it, probably around there. But it's superior to the uh, rawhide mallet that I used for years because if you notice a rawhide mallet, it's, got a, it's a spiral because it's, it's wrapped rawhide. Well, I noticed that when you're using that, anytime you hit that rawhide on something where there might be some debris, it gets up into those spirals. And then when you keep using it, those, that gold metal, the silver or the steel that you've got all over your workbench or something, it's going to get embedded in those coils and it's going to reflect onto your work itself. The Delrin hammer, you can sand it down, keep it flat. This right here is a great raising edge. You can raise copper bowls with this edge right here. So that's that hammer. I swear by this hammer. And, get, and you can get one without lead for about 15 bucks. This one has the lead, get the one with the lead. Another hammer, this is a chasing hammer. Chasing hammers have basically been used for chasing tools. It's got a hammer handle back here where you hold it and you get yourself, now remember when you're hammering, you break your wrist when you're hammering. You don't do this, you hammer like this, you know? I use this for smoothing out metal. I use this for shaping rings. I use this for sizing rings. And I use the other side as a rivet hammer. Silversmithing hammer. Now, these come in different forms. This, is, this one's not super expensive, but you, know, you don't have, have to have a super expensive hammer uh, to get the work done. This is a nice little flat hammer here, planishing hammer. You can use this to just take out dents. Just a very, just a all, all around hammer. This one right here is a really nice edge for raising or for shaping. And you can also take a file and sharpen the edge and use it as a texturing hammer if you want to do that. I do that a lot with my hammers. I take hammers like this and then I just shape them to the uh, shape that I want them. Those three hammers, these three hammers right here will get you, will actually let you do damn near everything you want to do for right now until you want to spend. Uh, Another thousand dollars on hammers, but you don't want to do that. Okay. Ring mandrel. Very important to have. Come in two, si come in two, two things. Uh, it's also just a great uh, mandrel for shaping rings and everything. Now, I will do a shout out for this. This is a Pepe uh, mandrel. Uh, I like it better because the numbers line up with the, uh, the uh, ring sizer. A lot of rings, ring mandrels that you get. The number 10, the number 11 here, uh, the, the number 11 on a ring sizer might be a 10. So when you, the lady comes in and says, okay, I'm a size 10, and you make the ring, you know, and then it's a size 12, you know, you're going to have to go back into it. I like the Pepe. That's the only shout out I'm going to give. Comes with numbers or without numbers, either way. This is something I didn't mention earlier. This is beeswax, and I use this on the uh, on on my saw when I'm when I'm getting ready to saw something. Now, a little thing about beeswax. These are cheap. You, now, I you can also use a candle. Works just as well. With beeswax, you're gonna you you don't take you can take your blade and just run it one time along the teeth. But a better way to do it is take this thing like this 
and run your beeswax on the back of the blade. If you put it on the front, the beeswax is going to dissipate real quick. Put it on the back of the blade and it, and it lasts about five times longer. Just a trick I learned from a, a German metalsmith. So beeswax or a candle to aid in your cutting. Last thing I'm going to tell you about, you need an anvil. If you don't want to spend a bunch of money on an anvil, you get yourself a steel block. Any kind of a steel block will work. I like something at least two inches thick. Now, where do you get one of these? This is where you go to eBay and you're going to do a search on eBay for round steel stock or round steel stock scrap. And you're going to have a picture of about three of these are coming up. Because what they do in these big companies, if they're making this stuff, they cut off the ends. And instead of throwing the ends away, they've now decided to put them on eBay. So you can get one two inches, one, one inch, three inches, and you can usually get them, three of them, for around $10 and six or seven dollars shipping. So get three of them, and you'll always have one around your bench, because you're going to, you know, you, you'll misplace them, or give them to your friends. That's what I would do. A steel block like this, if you're going to go buy one, it's going to run you about 20, 25 bucks. So eBay, another shout out, but that's, that's the only one I'm going to use. So I'm going to put that down there. And that's just about it. I don't see anything back in there. That's just about it. You put these, you put this, uh, these are the tools that you're going to use. This kit will get you through for a long time until you want to uh, expand your collection a little bit. So I hope this helps. And, uh, Get to work. So I want to let you know before we go any further that I am not advocating for any team in the NFL. That's not what this is about. I'm not pushing the, te the team that's written on this shirt, just so we can get that straight. Non-disclosure. <laughs> <laughs>